Oh, you can't see that. This is as perfect as you can. So, we're going to do the beginner's basics today. Oh, I gotta share it. Somebody knows they in here. I forget how to do this. Oh my goodness. I am just sucking at this today. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. I'm trying to figure out how to share this. <laughs> it changes. All right. I just can't remember how to do it, like, ever. There we go. I think I found it. This sucks. <laughs> okay, let's see. There. Yay. There. Come on, it's very slow. Okay, good. More options. There's your group. Hey, computer slug, we got so much crap up in. Okay. Good morning, Kristen. I'm still trying to remember how to share this. Okay. I'm going to try to lighten it up a little bit. Oh, no. That's a exposure? No. No. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Oh, my white balance is clearing. Okay. Let's see how that looks. We're going to do some basics today. Let's see, move this. Okay. 
So I want to talk about, well, I've just got a little plain sheet of paper here. This is cardstock. And um, this is what we're going to be using. Um, we've got a lot of options for you to go over. I'm going to start some basics about how to, um, like, there's, there's a lot of things I want to show. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I forgot to add the um to site. So now you can't hear it. So I got to start over. <laughs> okay. So this is a multi-purpose sealer, and it's by Deco Water Americana. It is wonderful. You can use it for sealing like porous surfaces, like wood or um ceramic and like rocks something like that you know if you make a mold you can use this on top of it you know plastic mold you can use this on top of it if you want to to keep it from sorry about that to keep it from you know sinking into your your palette your 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 canvas is what i call it so um, I like this one over everything else because it's nice and thick. 
and you can also add your paint to it. You can do a 50-50 mixture of paint and sealer and get your base coat down real quick, real fast like that. You know, um, then there's black gesso. Gesso is essentially water, glue, and like cornstarch or some kind of, um, I was going to say it is some kind of powder, and I can't remember. But if you make it at home, you basically like chalk powder. I'm sorry. Then like, but you get the professional kind, and it doesn't matter what brands you get; they're pretty much all the same. But it, Liquitex is the easiest to get. It's um, it's mixed so well, and technically, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to lay a thin coat down on your canvas. And I, by this I mean canvas panels and just canvas, the actual canvas. Um, you, you put it on one coat, let it dry over, you know, for 24 hours, and then you're supposed to put another coat on and let it dry for 24 hours before you start painting. I'm too lazy to do that. But you, um, you can, if it's not soft enough for you, like, um, if, if it's not smooth enough for you, you can sand it down and do another coat. So it's pretty easy to use. It, a little goes a long way, so it's worth the money. And then there's also a paint primer in a spray can. And Christina Lee uses these on her um, albums, her vinyl albums, before she starts painting. So, so they'll they'll stick to it. Um, it's not super expensive. I typically use the primer on, like. Um, like ceramic figurines or something like that. So, this is hard to paint. Okay, there's multiple different kinds of tools. First are the metal stylus tools. Uh, keep in mind that the stylus tools were originally designed for working with clay, and then the manicures took them and started using them, and then the dot art community started using them. This particular brand is very nice, and Works very well. It's got 10 different sizes. It's, you can find it on Amazon's Beauty Galleria. And there's one you could, you know, Christina Lee has her own set that you can buy on her website for $15 if they're still available. I haven't checked lately. This is my preferred tool. Um, these are the DIY Mandala Stone Dotting Tools. They're made out of, I believe, silicone, some kind of plastic. And they work very well. They're just very hard to clean sometimes. Um, these are the dotting center tools. Again, very nice. It's the the fat end at the bottom of the tool, just above the black, is helps you hold on to it. But it doesn't have um, as many sizes. And when you get to like six or eight, it jumps two millimeters in size. So they are good though. Uh, these are Mark's Mandala tools, and I've never used them. I've heard people like them quite a bit. Um, this is a clay tool that you can find on Amazon, and I use it as a micro dotter and a mixed paint. And I can't remember exactly what they call it. I think it's called a pro needle tool. So... So that's, that's basically different kind of tool. I am currently using, let's see, let's, I am currently using these from the tools from the Happy Dotting Company, the Happy Dotting Company. They just released them. They're fairly new. They have three sides, so it doesn't roll. If I can get this to focus, there we go. As long as you see that they have the numbers on them, that's millimeters, not just one, two, three, four. Now, this is actual millimeters, and they go up half a millimeter for pretty much a, for every tool up until about 14, and then it jumps to 15 and a half. But this is what I'm using right now. They don't roll, the numbers are burned into the, you know. Set into the the plastic, you can see them, you know, and they're, they're very easy to hold. 
So this is what I'm using now. All right. So other tools you might want. Um, silicone tools. Silicone tools, excuse me. Let's see. And you can get something like this at the Dollar Tree for making swishes. Personally, I would uh, blunt this a little bit somehow. A tapestry needle, something like that. The tip is extremely sharp. And what you should do is blunt it a little bit with maybe some a nail file, a metal nail file, whatever you have on hand. So. Oh, please tell me this is working. I've got a slideshow going on here, and hopefully you're seeing it. Must keep falling apart on my end. Okay. So, those are good tools to have around. If you get the happy dotting tools, it has what an ellipse tool into it. And it's basically like a chisel. And you use this to make a different kind of dot. So I'm still working, learning how to work with that one. Another thing you may want to try is like a Posca pen. Uh, they're just really good markers, special markers that are paint pens that um, are used for dotting. You can do outlines with this. I do not use cones or bottles yet. I, I don't think I'd be able to do it, of course. Um, one thing you're going to want, absolutely, absolutely want, is a water-soluble pencil. I got mine on Amazon. Just search for water-soluble pencils. You can get them any colors you want. White is but my preferred because I use black backgrounds a lot. You know, you can use a graphite pencil. There's other things you may want, including like a compass. And a protractor, if you want to play with some sacred geometry instead of just tracing stuff. So, try to get a halfway decent compass because they are, they, they're flimsy sometimes. Um, you don't want a ruler. Um, if you're going to go ahead and spend money, just you need any ruler you want. But if you're going to you want to spend some money on get a metal one with a cork backing, it'll help stay on your, it doesn't slide around as much. So these are some tools you will absolutely want. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back to the slideshow. All right, we'll talk about paint a little bit. There's a basic craft paint. This is just a bottle of Arteza craft paint. They have a, a, a lot of different kinds of paints. Um, but basically, any, your basic craft paint, like Deco Art, um, Folk Art, those kind of brands, Craft Smart, those, usually those are good straight out of the bottle. I would avoid, um, Apple Barrel brand because it's not good for dotting. It tends to be very thin. You have to make sure you shake these up quite a bit. All right. So next is. Oh. Okay. These are heavy body paints. Um, they come in many different brands. This is just the Arteza brand. Uh, Christina Lee likes these. I, um, I do like them. They are very easy to use. You, it's about a 50-50 mixture with a flow medium to make them just the right consistency for dotting. Okay. So I just go back. I don't think I got it. Anyway, I'll just go over this again. This is the craft paint. Any kind of craft paint will work. And most of them are a good consistency. So do you straight out of the bottle. Arteza's is not. Okay, and it's Arteza heavy bodied, like they look like oil paint, what you think oil paints look like. 
make sure you get acrylic and not oil paint. Acrylic is the only one that works. So here's basic craft paints. That's the craft smart. And then you have metallic paint. These need to be shaken up very well. And when you use a metallic, they tend to be stringy because they've got some kind of glue in them. And they'll just get all over the place if you're not careful. Let's say multi-surface paints are great for using on like ceramics, glass, anything that has like you can't varnish afterwards. These do not need a varnish on top of them. They will cure either in the oven or letting them sit for about 21 days. Then we have pouring acrylics. These are very, very thin. You cannot use these for dotting, but they make really pretty backgrounds if you want to do something like that. Okay. Let's say flow mediums. Okay. Anybody have any questions about what you've learned so far, what I've shown you? If you have any questions, just let me know. Oh gosh. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to start on start on flow mediums. And this is called flood flow trial. It's basically a latex paint thinner that um, but professional painters use it to thin out the paint for their spray guns and stuff, like half paint. And you can use it with your heavy body paint and your medium body paints as well. I forgot to mention medium body paint. I couldn't get the picture to come up. But basically, like this liquid text in the big tubes, these are kind of a medium body, they don't need as much flow medium as like um, something like the, the these heavy bodies do. So, but this is, this is, I like this. The Artist Loft is like about half the price. They have a big old tube of it. So that's what you, these are basically medium body paints. They're not as thick as the Wands in this pig. That's so you know. Oh, when well, you're painting. All right. Where am I? All right. So this is a brand that you can buy at Home Depot, Walmart, like any of those places. So in it, it's very economical. It goes a long way. I keep mine. Cause I get like a 32 amp jug, a big huge gallon jug of it. I keep mine in one of those old ketchup bottle things that you get from Walmart for a buck. So that's what I do. Then there's a gloss gel or there's a matte gel. This is, this will thicken up your paint considerably. It's also used on canvases to make texture. It, if, your paint is too thin, you can add a little bit of a gel, just a little bit at a time. It is it can be expensive, and I haven't had much luck with it, but it's out there. Okay, and then we have, this is a gloss fluid medium. It makes your paint really shiny while you're working with it. And there's also a glass medium, the so gloss and glass glass medium that will turn any paint you have into a multi-surface paint. It is very gooey, but it is so shiny and beautiful. Let me show you something I did with the glass medium. I kind of turned my project. I said, I was like, what did it, it, it was a stained glass window and I wanted to mimic it in a way. So this is what I came up with. That's like basically 
I just put the glass medium and just yeah, I didn't really dot it except for this part right here. So this part is just just random colors that I made with mica powders and glass medium. So it's, like, it's and inspired by the glory window in Dallas, Texas. But that was something new for me to play with. Anyway, so we have two different kinds of those. These are all flow mediums. They 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 make you. These are all flow mediums. They are not pouring mediums. Pouring mediums can make your paint way too thin. You want to find a flow medium or a fluid medium. Pouring is a lot thinner. It's more like a watery substance. You can use it, but it's really it thin to paint down a lot. Okay, then we have varnishes. This is called Gamvar. It's really designed for oil painting, uh, but you can use it. It's super expensive, but you don't need mops to cover it. You can use a spray. This is called Crystal Clear. Make sure whatever varnish you use, it says that it is crystal clear when dries. There's no yellowing. Because if you use anything that's yellowing, you're not going to have a good pro It's not going to look good afterwards. Okay, I, I use this, the Liquitex gloss, gloss varnish. Because I like my stuff shiny. You can get it matte as well. Um, and then there's polycrylic. It's clear, crystal clear top coat. Make sure you get the clear gloss if you're going to use it. And this is really good for using over like wood and stuff. Something that you need a really good, not quite resin, but close. So. Okay, that is the end of that. All of those are in my... All, all of those. I have in a... Um, Tammy, no. The additive is only added when you use a very thick paint. If you're using a craft paint like this, you will not need to put the um, additive in it unless it thickens up while it's sitting. Now, when I'm painting, I don't like to throw it away. I, I try to use it on something else later. So I have these little paint pots. They're really cheap on Amazon. You know, I buy them like 200 at a time or something. You can just toss them when you're done with them. Make sure you seal them up really good. Like that. Make sure you hear it click. It'll keep your paint fluid for quite a while. And then you could, or you could get one of these like screw on top like this. I got the big one for my white paint, something that I use a lot of. So, and then you definitely need a fluid medium for this and for this. And most of the Arteza bottled paints, you're going to need a little bit of additive to it. Okay, here's some other things I keep around. Um, pointed Q-tips. I buy mine on Amazon. I always have, I'll show you the white pencil, the soluble, the water, water soluble pencil. I always use that. Okay. These are the water, the tooth, toothpicks. No, I'm sorry, not the toothpicks. They're basically Q-tips with toothpicks on top of toothpicks. But uh, the pointy end, these are very handy as opposed to regular Q-tips. Um, one thing I have invested in is the Mylar stencils. I don't know if you can even see them. I take the white part off. But the Mylar stencils, I you buy grid lines and different sizes. Um, let's see. This is a 12 point and this is a 16 point. So you can get different sizes, different numbers of sections. You know, if you use whatever you feel like using or something, but sometimes somebody will say you need a 16 point stencil or draw among, you know, grid lines. 
you can buy just normal um you know just any kind of stencil you want there are some out there specifically for mandala and you don't you can decorate them however you want i have done that multiple times so i'm trying to find one i have Oh, those draw by something like this. You know, I I store a bunch of my other stuff in there. Uh, ah, here's one. Took a stencil and converted it into hearts for Valentine's Day. So I thought that was pretty. Cool. That was that was really fun. Then I covered it with a glitter mod pod for a varnish. Looks like I screwed it up somehow. <laughs> okay, so you can just do well this is wood. This is a wood cutout. And you can just, you can do anything you want. You can play with it. You can use liner paint pens are very handy. Let's see. I'm not getting, this is so dark. Okay, maybe that'll help. I just keep thinking it's very dark. How can you see it? Okay. Visualizer. I don't think I can do anything. No. Okay. And everything I everything I make comes with a free dog hair. I have hair everywhere because my daughter's dog is long hair. Oh, and I'd say there's different kind of canvases you can use. For instance, this is a stretch canvas. Just a cheap little old one if I got 50 cents. And the, uh, it, on, a, on a frame and stretch it, like wet, wet and stretch it across. Thank you. And then there's like this one. This is a panel. It's flat. Like a board. So. Those are the different kinds of canvases you can use. You can do any shape, any size, anything you want. Alright. Alright. So, what I like to do. How much time we got left? About 15 minutes. Here's something you can start on your own. We'll give you the basics. We're going to be doing this every Tuesday. So we're not going to try to smash it all into one week. But one thing you want to do this week is get started on practicing your dots. And what I do is I take my ruler on top of some cardstock and a pencil of some kind. And let's see. Let me come right around. I can actually do it. And you want to draw some lines on there. Make your own grid grid lines. Like grid, grid, graphing paper type thing. But you want to do it fairly big. So you have plenty of room to play. But so this is basically going to be your homework. <laughs> And we'll do some, we'll do the fancy dots next week. You just take that ruler and draw yourself some guidelines. Just do the whole thing like this. And then when you're ready, you take some paint. I was going to take some random paint on my tool. And you practice making your center dot. And you just 
center, you practice centering your dog. Don't smash it down. Barely touch down. If you put multiple coats of paint on it right when it's wet, you'll have a nice thick puppy dot. So if you do just one coat, you can it'll be flat and you can top dot it. The other thing you need to keep around is like paper towels, water, baby wipes, that kind of thing, so you can wipe the paint off your tools. I'm not doing a very good job of it. I'm going to have to actually wash them. A little bit of, bring some water to a boil. Take it off uh, the heat. And put your tool in there for about 10 minutes. And then wipe it off. Or well, maybe 10 seconds. Um, and so, see. 10 15 minutes. Okay, then take one of your metal stylus tools. I'm gonna use this one. And remember, this is just this is just demonstration. You can come back to this and watch it again later. And you practice, you do. You're dotting around, you go north, east, south. Well, uh, I did it wrong. North, south, east, west. And then you can do one in the middle. And that will automatically, you basically do the same. North, south, east, west. Or by the clock, 12, 6, 3, 9. And that will give you an 8 point. <clears throat> 16 points, excuse me. No, that's 8. Okay, so if you want to do like, I'm going to do a little bit smaller. So you can do two. Okay, so north, south, east, west. And then in between, you put two dots. And you have to kind of eyeball it to make sure that they're even. If you have, you see, you really don't need, a, you really don't have to have anything but your center point marked. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can do it. It requires a lot of practice. And I paint, I would paint for hours a day, and I try to still. So, but now that I'm back to teaching classes, it's going to be reduced to trying to come up with patterns for my live videos. Okay. So that's basically how you do this. It says a puppy dot with eight dots around it. And the this is called the um eight what is it the, the wheel of eight bucks or something like that. It has to do with the eight eight primary Beliefs of Buddhism, and this is just a twelve point. That just it just it tells you have like on thirds, and this will be even. This will be odd to a degree. Well, it's every three or something. So, this is how you do it. This is how you start. That center dot is called a bindu, and every mandala has a center dot. And then we always go around with them dots like this. That's essentially how you get started. And then you kind of build from there. So we'll finish this next week because I like to go over all the tips and stuff you need before you um, get started. You need to know about your tools. You need to know about your paint. Okay, so next week we'll do a little bit with the, a little bit more with this. We'll expand it and we'll do walking the dot and the paddles and swishes, uh, some other things like that. We'll play around with some of these, um, like this elliptical tool. And, um, the week after that, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll play around with it on here. We'll get started on, 
building on to it, making your own pattern. And then we will, uh, the next week, we will work on mixing paint. If you want to do, you know, make a, um, I'm completely blanking on what it's called, gradients. You know, you can do gradients like I've done. This is like a dark color. This is the original color, and I just added white until it gradually got lighter and lighter. So, just these are gradients. So we can do something like that so you know how to mix paint. We'll talk a little bit about the color wheel. And so, so I'll show you how to do it all. And maybe we'll play around with some like metallic paints. You can see how they, but you can play with them if you want. They tend to be, I think this is mixed with that glass, glass medium, mica powders and glass medium. This is really, really, really thick. It just kind of pops off. But I love it. It took me a while to get used to it, but now I love it. I want to use it on everything. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Explain the tools. I bought some. What tool did you get? Okay, there we go. Oh, you can see it. Oh, okay. No, oh, that's great for starter kit. There's a, you know, like $25 for this starter kit. Okay, so that'd be great for practicing. Did you get the rods that came with it? You're welcome, Kristen. So this, this will be available for everybody to watch again um, on Facebook. On my, It'll be available on my actual Facebook page, my business page. Um. If you're watching in a group, you can find it there too. It'll probably be faster to find it directly on my um my page though. So bookmark if you're not in my group, please join. There are lots of stuff um I've got information for you on there in the check the uh, uh photo albums. So but Tammy, that's great, that's perfect. So We'll, we'll use them all. We'll, we'll use both. Well, you, if you have the rods that came with it, which is fine. You just don't really know what sizes they are. So, you might have to find a way to get a measuring, measurements on them. And you only have like five sizes, but that's cool too. So. Okay, next week, you'll need your sheet and we'll keep doing some practice on it. And we will do We'll, we'll start building a basic, um, start a basic pattern for you. I'll show you swishes and stuff like that. And how to hold your tool. 
But basically, it's like these kind of rods and stuff, you hold up and straight up and down. You hold them straight up and down, and you boom. And then these metal tools, you can kind of hold them like a pencil. Okay. So practice this week, and I will see you next week at the same time. And we'll finish up some more of this. So I only have an hour a day now. So take care of yourself. Have a great evening, afternoon, evening, rest of your day, whatever it is. I'm in Oklahoma, by the way. So it's, it's like 1030 in the morning for me. Just dropped off a bunch of kids at school. Come out here for an hour and paint on Facebook. And then I got to go get another, go pick up a kid. And then feed him and put him down for a nap, hopefully. Okay. So just practice this. Practice, practice, practice. You're very welcome. I will be here tomorrow at 9.30. And we're going to play, if you're in Christina Lee's group, um, we're going to be working on her color challenges. Okay? We're just playing around with colors. That's more. And there's an event on that for her, in her group and on my Facebook page and in my group. Okay? So, y'all take care, and I will see you tomorrow or next week. Bye-bye.